Good evening. You are tuned into Brockton Guardian Angels Community Talk. Tonight I'm going to be talking a little bit about respect. And by respect I mean the respect that we give one another as citizens of this community. Now I have an article or actually a, uh, an essay here written by a man named Matthew Casey published in today's edition of the Brockton Enterprise. It's about how somebody, somebody burglarized his house. Now I'm going to tell you right now that in my opinion, the kind of people who do things like that are degenerates, they should be arrested, they should be put in prison, because listen to what he has to say. Michael Casey, an open letter to a thief. I don't know much about you. Maybe the police will arrest you once some of the things you stole from us are located. Then I'll probably learn more than I care to know. Until that happens, you know a lot more about me. After all, you've been in my house. You ransacked my bedroom and tore through our belongings. You've seen where my children do their homework and where they sleep at night. Still, we must be an abstraction to you. We're nameless and faceless. Stealing from us was just another way to put money in your pocket. We're a line in the police log, another crime statistic. By now, you know how much the cameras you stole are worth to you. What was inside of them, have, that, that's what had the most value to us. My children racing downstairs on Christmas morning. My daughter beaming with pride, winning an award in her last basketball game. My son playing on his first Little League team. You even stole our old broken camcorder. It was good for... All it was good for was playing back our old 8mm video cassettes, hours of piano recitals, images of my kids on ice skates for the first time, family vacations, they're all gone. In a pragmatic sense, I understand why you took the cameras. They can be readily converted to cash. But why did you steal a little girl's jewelry box? It contained few things of real monetary value. Her first necklace, a Christmas present from her father, a ring, a bracelet. But most valuable of all, my daughter lost a collection, keepsakes, and mementos that she'd been collecting for most of her life. These are things that cannot be replaced with a trip to the mall. So what happened to our stuff? I'm sure the local pawn shops did their part to facilitate your criminal activity by continuing to create a market for the things you steal from the rest of us. Did some of it go to your drug dealer to help you get your next fix? I assume everything else, our memories and mementos, were either erased or tossed into the trash. Some blame the economy for the apparent upswing in crime that recently touched our home. But while millions of people are out of work and struggling to get by, the vast majority of them don't choose to violate others for a solution to their problems. You're different. You decided that your best option was to steal from my family. Though we don't keep money in the house, you made sure you took my daughter's allowance money. I'm not sure how far those four dollars will take you, but I can tell you one thing. Unlike you, my daughter earned the money she had. I'm not naive. Crime is a part of life. We can't escape it. Ultimately, our losses don't amount to much compared to the real damage that crime has inflicted on others. The things we lost can be replaced. We may no longer have our keepsakes and photos, but we have the mementos and we'll make new ones. What about you? When you were younger, is this the life you envisioned for yourself, climbing through windows and stealing from children? I doubt you're any better off. I'm pretty sure you weren't trying to pay off your college loans. The only one thing certain to benefit is the home security company we recently hired to help keep people like you away. I'm sure you have your excuses. When I worked in a prison, I noticed that every inmate either claimed to be innocent or felt they had a good reason to commit their crimes. Perhaps you have your own rationalizations to try and justify what you did. Maybe you even believed them. There are things and there are things, plenty of things wrong with the world, and most of us like to complain. If you ever feel tempted to do the same before you do, I suggest you first take a good, long, hard look in the mirror. That essay is by Matthew Casey. It's in today's issue of the Brockton Enterprise. Now let me say a few things about this. If you're thinking about breaking into somebody else's house and taking their stuff, think of what that would do to you if somebody broke into your house. Remember the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. It's common sense. And by the way, fellow Brocktonians, there are things you can do about this. You can join a neighborhood watch group. 
Uh, however, neighborhood watch groups are only useful for when people are actually watching. Now, if you go home, if you're a member of a watch group and you go home and you shut the curtains and watch house on TV, then you're not watching. And the neighbor's house, in the meanwhile, is getting busted into. These are things to think about. You've got to get involved in your community. You've got to watch out for your neighbors. You've got to watch out for your family. You've got to watch out for your friends. Have a good evening. This is Bruce Perlison from the Brockton Guardian Angels.